What is up, everyone? I hope you all are having a fantastic Monday. I'm Liza Monet Morales, and I'm super excited to be here today. It has been an amazing just weekend uh, full of, I've seen everybody out there protesting, using their voices, talking to friends about the census, making sure that they're filling it out. You know, as we're gearing up, uh, also for the premiere of the two night premiere, actually, of and she could be next. I personally am so excited being a woman of color, being someone that did run for office on the local level and didn't win, but I also didn't come in last. Uh, I do understand the importance of us really getting out there and on the ground. And I'm pumped to be able to watch this two part series because I want to take notes. I want to see how it was done, but I also want to hear from the women who now have won and are in the office. So I'm super, super excited to be joined today by Senator Maria Elena Lorazo. Hello, Senator. Hi, how are you, Liza? Good to be with you. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you so very much. So first things first, can you let us know where are you uh, checking in from? Are you up in Sacramento? I'm up in Sacramento. I'm <laughs> sheltered down. And um, as soon as we're done, I'm off to the Capitol because we have votes to take today. Wow, that is so exciting. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we want to talk about today. And I have to tell you, and I, I mentioned to you when we were backstage that I wanted to share something and wait to share it until I was... Um, online. I'm going to get a little emotional here, but I just want to say thank you for having the guts to run. Thank you for representing as a Latina like you. I too am a California daughter. I am a sixth generation Angelino, and I actually was born in your district. I was born in General Hospital. My family's from Lincoln Heights, and uh, is where we started. My parents uh, both went to Lincoln High School. I still go to 26th Street Tacos. It's my favorite. Uh, when I'm in the area. And so it was super, super emotional for me to know not only, I remember when you were elected, I actually also saw you at the California March, uh, the anniversary that we had in LA. I remember seeing you on stage when you were running and I was so pumped to see you win and to hear that you were part of this documentary and that we could have this chat really just meant the world to me because you have been really on the ground. And I would love for you to share with my audience and for everybody tuning in the work that you were doing even before you were in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, this has been a, a very amazing experience for me. I never, I'm sure like most women, never imagined myself running for office. Uh, like most women, we do what we believe in, what we have to do on the ground. Um, and I was a union organizer. I was side by side with these incredibly powerfully strong women who needed to learn that about themselves, that they weren't just all of a sudden becoming strong women. They had always been strong for the whole lives. So housekeepers who do, you know, uh, all these rooms and hotels every day or dishwashers and cooks. And then I met janitor women and it was just, you know, very, very uh, motivational for me. And I thought, finally, I'm going to connect uh, for me, not only what's happening on the ground, the actions, the, the strategy, uh, the courage connected to policy making in Sacramento. So, and frankly, the other thing that happened was this guy was elected to the White House. And I said, enough is enough. I'm not going to take it anymore. We got to get more women elected. I love that. I love that that was also just a tipping scale for you. And speaking of which, I also have to tell you, I just saw the photo that you all shared on Twitter, not to get too political, but I really appreciated that you unanimously, all the Democrats here in California, took this very powerful photo on the steps with your mask, of course, uh, endorsing Joe Biden. So can you speak on that as to why that was historic and why you wanted to all come out in solidarity the way that you did? Well, aside from all the, um, both the men and women who, who stood on the steps, we also wanted to show the women, Latina women, coming out for Joe Biden because we don't want that the kind of talk that there is against women, the kind of talk that there is about Latinos and immigrants, you know? So we're coming out as a group to say, we are going to work our butts off uh, for Joe Biden. We're going to work hard. We're going to work individually. We're going to work as a group because we have to change this country, put it on a course, not back to the normal, but put it on a new course. 
And that's why we're going to work so hard for Joe Biden. We cannot have someone like Trump in the White House, and we need someone like Biden and whoever his vice presidential woman candidate is going to be. Yes, we're going to make that happen. Yes, it's all about on the ground working. And so I do actually want to connect that to a couple of different things. First and foremost, I do want to let everybody at home know, you all know how much I love to unbox. So I want to give a big shout out to the filmmakers of And She Could Be Next because they actually sent a little gift box my way uh, in celebration of the two night premiere. For, uh, part one debuts tonight, part two debuts tomorrow. But before we get to that, I did want to talk about some of this on the ground work legislation, specific to some of the legislation that you yourself are having, um, you know, have have been putting forward. But even some of the other ones, like we were talking offline about what was going on with affirmative action possibly coming back, you know, what that looks like, and also with ethnic studies returning and being a requirement in the university. So can you speak on those and what that looked like and how close they were to not pa passing? Yes, they were very much uh, had been so controversial that it was unclear if we were going to be able to pass it. And, you know, folks were saying, yes, some of us were saying, yes, we have to push forward. But there were others who were kind of nervous about taking that uh, vote, both for ethnic studies and for repealing Prop 209 in order to get back affirmative action. And I think that all the movement on the ground opened people's eyes to see, to, uh, to see that we do need more education. We do need reminders about how there is still institutional racism in this country. It's not here and there. It's not um, uh, single cases, anecdotal cases. No, it is systematic where uh, um, uh, African-Americans in particular, uh, but people of color in general, we are systematically excluded. All the policies that get passed keep us excluded. And so um, providing, uh, making sure that there's a requirement in our colleges so that our young people could understand the deep roots of slavery, understand the deep roots of Jim Crow laws, understand how our Native American indigenous populations were wiped out in many parts of this land, understand and remind about immigrants. Everybody came from somewhere except our Native American and African American sisters and brothers. And so this, this opening up of our eyes has led now to a change and I think more courage. It all happens from the ground up. I love that and my hope really is that this will inspire for us to even go further and for it to start at the elementary school level because we really need to have these conversations early on with our students. And as you know, uh, being from California as well, one of the things that I really think that it made me uh, really question or consider how do we move forward is the assignment that we have here with our missions that we do with the California missions, right? To what will that actually look like? How can we be more inclusive of that? Because there are some things that definitely have systemic and systematic racism tied in even to some of our curriculum. So being able to look at that, I think is something that is key. So I'm excited for what you all have done and, and to see where it goes from there, you know? So now I, I know I would just add Liza on the issue of uh, ethnic studies. Uh, yes, so please. You is that we have a current bill on the assembly side um, on uh, making uh, uh, ethnic studies a requirement from high school. So we do want to get to a younger and uh, Assemblyman Jose Medina is the author on that. We're going to work hard to get that passed. Gosh, I just, yes, please, we need it. Our, our youth needs it so much. You know, I've been out myself on the front lines uh, on these marches for a variety of causes for Black Lives Matter to, uh, you know, marching against uh, ICE and the uh, our children being detained and babies, you know, the babies being detained in cages. So many things. And of course, the police brutality. I just was at one yesterday for Andres Guardado, who unfortunately was shot and killed by a sheriff in Los Angeles. So there's just been so much action. One of the marches that we did, we actually went through your uh, district. We started off in Boyle Heights and went all the way into City Hall. And so being out there, it's been so empowering to see not just black and brown unity in a way that I personally haven't seen, if ever, uh, really coming together, but our Anglo allies, as well as our Asian allies, Native Americans also being out there and us really coming together como una familia. And that's one of the things that I'm even seeing the youngins ask is, 
where can I learn more? So there's this thirst for this hunger for knowledge of our people that isn't being shared. So I really appreciate what you all are doing in terms of really helping advance that conversation on an earlier level as well. And on the flip side, to also stand up for the voices that are in the shadows that we might not consider off of the top of our heads. So I want to actually hold some space for that. Earlier this year, I was executive producer, uh, one of three, and the creative director, as well as one of the co-hosts for Artissimo Live, where we array basically uh, put together in a live stream format like this, we connected over 100 of the top voices in Latin music, entertainment, activists, including Dolores Huerta, who I know you have ties to as well, uh, across that and, and across seven different countries and eight different timelines, all together on Cinco de Mayo because we wanted to give Cinco de Mayo a significance and have everybody put their flags down, put that aside, and come together for our unsung heroes, which are really the farm workers of the United States and Puerto Rico right now who are picking our food, who are out there. So we ended up raising over $1.7 million for them that day, which was really fantastic. But it really warmed my heart to see what you all are doing as well with one of the bills in particular, how you're also looking to help garment workers. They also are part of this unseen, unsung heroes that really are the fabric of our country. So can we talk a little bit about that legislation as well? Well, thank you very much for bringing that up. Uh, last year, I uh, chaired uh, one of the budget subcommittees and an issue came before us and there were dozens and dozens of these women garment workers who came to testify. And it was just shocking, shocking to me that the, what they were talking about is could we uh, uh, refill this restitution fund to be able to get the money that they are owed, that they were owed, uh, it was in the millions and millions of dollars, but it resulted in uh, several hundred dollars for each of these garment workers. It's a restitution fund to make up for all the wage theft in the garment industry. Mm. So all they wanted was, can we get our money that's already been adjudicated and decided, and here's the, uh, uh, the decision on my case, this is how much I'm owed. And I was floored. The year 2020, and we have these workers who are so important to our economy in California who couldn't get paid their minimum wage and we're waiting literally now, it was two years after the fact. Then they came back to me and said, thank you, but that really doesn't solve the problem. We have peace rates where the, um, uh, we're just, it, it's in, used as an excuse to super exploit workers, not to incentivize and give bo uh, workers a bonus for working hard for great productivity. It's used as a way to um, get them uh, to produce more for a lot less. They weren't even getting minimum wage. And also to for those brands, you know, the brands that when we go shopping, we look out for, um, that they should be held responsible because they're the ones who give the money to the contractors to pay the workers. Now, if I give you a dollar to produce a dress for me, you know darn, darn well that the workers who actually make that dress aren't going to get very much. And right. so... Don't pretend like you know you 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 know ignorance here. You know right. what's going on. So we want to hold them accountable for paying those workers. A lot of those workers, they live where there's rats, they live, there's no water, there's no soap. I mean, it is really an embarrassment to this country. So we're changing that. My bill just got um, our bill just got um uh, voted on last week in the Senate. It's going to go to the assembly side and we're hoping it goes all the way to the governor. I mean, I'm going to be real loud right now and I'm going to tell you I'm going to light a candle because I definitely need to see that happen. I personally, my grandmother, as I mentioned to you, she was a garment worker herself. Uh, her thing, and, and imagine back in the 50s and the 60s and 70s when she was working is she could do the overlap like no one else. So she was doing it manually and so she would get paid extra pennies, if you will. But it was a huge deal for her back then. And I think of, wow, it's crazy to me to think even what you were fighting for, which wasn't even anything extra that you were looking to this luxury, right? So to hear that all these decades later, it's still the same fight is so frustrating. So I'm really happy that it is, you know, not only just being talked about, but that there's active movement to change it. Uh, because of that, it is something that I've been very active about too, talking about fast fashion and how it really just doesn't help us. It's a huge detriment, uh, both domestically and internationally. So again, I thank you on that end. 
Uh, I did want to give a shout out to a special uh, commenter that we have here, Grace Lee herself, uh, which I think is great. She was talking about ethnic studies requirement. Yes, she was very excited. And also, uh, we love this too. You have Unite Here, Local 11 LA Forward coming through from And She Could Be Next, which is awesome. But for those who don't know, Grace Lee is one of the filmmakers behind And She Could Be Next. So I'd love to chat about this documentary with you. So first, what I'm gonna see, the internet is being the internet. We're gonna see how this works. I'd like to actually play the trailer. So let's see if we can get this to go for us. Any guesses out of 11,000 people that have served in the United States Congress, how many women of color have served? There is this assumption that black people don't vote, that Latinos are not American citizens, that Asian Americans are Republicans, and that young people are wholly unreliable. I want you to understand that who I am is a product of a movement. There are not enough people on the inside that look like me. People aspiring to be leaders in this country, they need to go through women of color because we're making our voices known. When I say I'm a social justice seeker, I'm a mama for justice or all these things, that's where I'm saying I'm American. I don't need to say it. I, I act like an American. Candidates do not normally talk to people in the Asian American community because historically speaking, we are the community that turns out to vote at the lowest rate. So we want to change that here today. <laughs> We're no longer asking for permission yeah. to do what we need to do. We're going to do it, and we're going to lead from the top, and people need to see it. The sort of traditional notions of what's possible in American politics are being challenged every day. Elections are important, but our lives are on the line. Yeah. Elections yeah. 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 Sisters and brothers, it's about building power in our community to win what is right. Except the communities that need to be brought in reflect the new American majority. They're young, they're brown, they might speak another language. And there's a lot of us. Oh. I'm excited about the fact that women of color are now coming into our own, that we're standing up and taking our rightful place in the pantheon of leadership, that we're changing what the face of leadership looks like. It is a new day, there's a new coalition, and ultimately we're gonna push this country forward because there's more of us than those that seek to do us harm. Yes! Oh my gosh, like it gets me, it seriously gets me every time. It's just so awesome. I'm like, I'm really emotional just because especially what we're going through right now with Black Lives Matter, you know, one of the big things I keep discussing, especially with our Latino community, is the bridge that we have between black and brown and that unity needs to be stronger than ever. And to see this film really reflect that is everything because until, you know this firsthand, until Black Lives Matter in this country, all lives, including Latino lives, can't matter because we don't even have a full seat at the table. We're invisible half the time, right? And so to see you out in the forefront with fellow uh, you know, uh, African queens, uh, African American queens, like it just makes me so happy. And to see, you know, also our Indian sisters, our Asian sisters, like everyone just coming together. And so I get emotional watching it. What is it like for you watching back that time in your life and the journey that it's been? Well, I, I especially get emotional. All of what you just said um, is very inspiring. And, but the part that gets me the most emotional is, you know, seeing our sisters and brothers at the border. Uh, just imagine, just open up the gates, these big, big, tall fence gates, and to be able to touch a family member for a few minutes and then just say, now go back to the other side of the fence. Um, it's very... Uh, disheartening that that still happens. Uh, it's very disheartening that when uh, a Latina legislator like Assembly Member Lorena uh, Gonzalez goes to visit um, uh, one of the detention centers uh, to deliver things that they need and she stopped and turned away. There, there are so many things that in, in my personal life are, are so touched 
by seeing all these women and what they're doing in their respective communities and their states um, across the country. And to be lifted up through this film, it's never happened before. That's never happened. That yeah. women of color are being, they're paying attention to them through a film. I, I'm so grateful and it's so great and so remarkable. It should lead to many more films because there's so many more women whose lives and whose uh, commitment and dedication has not been acknowledged. Um, and so I'm, I'm really grateful to Grace and Anayansi, all the, it was all these women who put together this film. Yeah, and let's talk about that, Grace. I love it. She just actually commented as well, families belong together. You know, we know that she, as well as the other filmmakers, including Ava DuVonet, who's one of the producers, they'll be doing a chat also uh, before tonight's premiere. But what was it like working with the team of women, being women yourself? Like, I just have to imagine that was like a dream come true. Ab absolutely. I mean, the things that I was talking about, they could relate to. Um, and just, you know, being, being, um, followed everywhere was just, you know, it was, uh, awkward, uh, to be filmed at everything that you're doing. And, you know, our lives some, many times are very private. And so to open that up, they gave me, you know, I trusted them. I trusted them with my personal life. I trusted them with the things that I was saying and doing. Uh, and how I was acting with my family, uh, with my sisters who came, you know, to work on the campaign. Um, I trusted them as women. I didn't know them that well, but I trusted them because they were women. I knew where they were coming from and I believed in what they wanted to do. And so, you know, to mic me up under my dress. <laughs> I love it. Bathrooms and, you know, okay, let's mic you up, pull up your dress. And I'm like, what? But, uh, it, you know, it was part of the trust yeah. and it was part of the belief and the commitment that women's stories as activists need to be told and lifted up, not marginalized the way women activists have been, especially yes. women of color uh, have been marginalized, just to be lifted up and thanked. So when you watch it now, or when, uh, when you first saw it, did you guys do a cast and crew viewing? I'm curious to know what that was like. Were you able to do it over Zoom? Or like, what was it like watching your story again on camera? And were you able to watch it with others that are in the film? You know, I made a point to watch it by myself. I, I, I really wanted to just, okay, what what's it like by myself without anybody else influencing yeah. what they thought, what, you know, how they felt. I wanted to go through it myself. And again, I learned so much uh, about extraordinary uh, women. Um, and that was one thing. And, um, you know, I was glad that part of my story, it wasn't just a focus on me, but I was allowed to, I was allowed to tell my story in the context of struggle, yes. uh, in the context of, you know, these women housekeepers and, and other women who came to help on the campaign. And I knew what they go through every day. I, I felt it. We fought to change it. We won changes. So it was about me, but in the context of something bigger. Um, and it was very, you know, it was very, it was very exciting uh, because it's a, a, a film that's being shown now across the country. Um, but it was also a reminder, don't lose that connection. Don't lose who you are. You know, these are the people who made you, you know, and um, and those are the it's that ground operation that made all the women who were featured in the film. So speaking of the other uh, women featured, I mean, there's so many of you who are history makers. What was like the one takeaway that you had, you know, after watching the film yourself, you know, because you obviously were so in it doing your journey to be able to watch the journey of others. What was that one or two takeaways that you got like? okay, you know what, I learned something or kudos to that person or that person. I would love for the audience to be on, on the lookout, if you will, while they watch. Well, I think one is um, that even though, of course, we have moments of being afraid of taking a, a step like that, that in fact, we're fearless. 
And we have to, we, we got to tap that, you know, in ourselves, in our experiences. So I saw, saw, saw many moments where these women were um, doing things that I'm sure inside there was, there was some fear, but they showed fearlessness um, and fierceness and a, a deep commitment. And so there was, you know, even whether you won or didn't win, quote unquote, that particular election, it didn't matter yes. because you, you have a much deeper commitment. The yes. commitment is not to get elected. The commitment to our community is to do something about all the wrongs that are happening in our community. And so that's what gets us past one election or, or, or two elections, whatever it takes. That's yeah. what gets us past. Yeah, you know, I think it is so impactful because one of the things in working with a couple of different packs that I did, and as, as I said at the top of the show, I personally ran for city council. I was the only renter uh, ever to run in my uh, neighborhood. Uh, and it was interesting because everyone's like, what's this young girl going to do? And everyone had like their million dollar tees and open houses. And I just did what I knew is to roll up my sleeves, go knocking door to door, talking to people, getting to know them. And while I didn't come in last, I was like, great. I just barely missed it getting on the city council, but I did end up getting appointed to other commissions and doing other things for my community. And that just made me dive in deeper in a lot of the activism work that I do today to continue to represent voices that are marginalized and to understand you know, what oppositions we might be facing that maybe the public isn't even aware of internally that I can then figure out how do I build those bridges, right? And so it's been interesting because when I was on the trail, I had so many people tell me like, I didn't even know we had Latinos in Beverly Hills. I didn't even know we had renters. Like y'all do things here. I'm like, wow, wow. Okay. All the things. Right. And it was very similar to when I was on the trail for Hillary, I was in Arizona the day before, um, the day before the election. And I ended up knocking on over 200 doors. America Ferrera was out there, Amber Tamblin, myself. We flew out, we spoke to a bunch of students. And then after we spoke to the students at the university, we went out knocking door to door. And I was shocked. I had three guns pulled on me. Uh, and I was told several times that the only place a woman belonged uh, was in the kitchen or in the bedroom. And I'm like, wow, okay, this is what we're dealing with, America, okay. And so rather than counter it with hate, I countered it with compassion of here, I'm gonna plant a seed. I'm coming with the goal of planting a seed. Here's the information. If you still need a ride to go vote, as long as you're voting, I'm gonna stand by that. That's what we're, you know, we're gonna do, we're gonna do and focus on. And I did have one man take his shotgun down and be like, all right, give me the information to vote. Like, it was interesting what it was like where I'm like, I'm not gonna counter the way that you're coming at me because I remember whose daughter and whose granddaughter I am. And I know that in our culture, con todo amor es lo que hacemos, right? That we have to bring that love even when others are not so nice and kind to us. That's how we're resilient and that's how we keep rising. So I so love that you're sharing that story and that you saw that in others too. Absolutely. You know, I was in Arizona also for um, the 16, and um, I was with a group of high school students, Latino high school students, Muslim high school students who would go every day. Um, this was when school was, right? It, and, and they would go every day after school to the union hall, quickly do, do the homework, and then go out and knock on doors um, and or make phone calls. And what they learned about each other Yes. was extraordinary every single day. So it's the interaction, not only with the people that we knock on the doors for the voters, but it's also the interaction with other people of, you know, most of the time you meet somebody new when you go out walking. Yeah. And you're yeah. Fully, right. And so they, they develop this um, understanding of two different cultures through food. Yeah. Even if they didn't like each other's food, it didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They got exposed to it. And, and I'm so proud of being around these young high school students. I had to feed them every day. So that was tough. But uh, more than anything, these Mexican kids with Muslim yeah. kids going and knocking on doors, um, uh, you know, as part of their civic engagement commitment was pretty powerful. I would love it if uh, you or someone on your team, I'm gonna shout out Freddie, who's been awesome, can find some of those pictures because I would love to share those. 
I just, that just warms my heart to be able to bridge communities. Cause again, it starts when we're young, right? And we have to build those bridges then and, and plant those seeds. So I so love that. I also want to, uh, thanks, see, Freddie is so good. He's like, I'm on it, <laughs> which is great. But I also want to give a shout out to Margin Safina, who's watching us from Facebook. She says, Maria Elena, we're so thrilled to have you in our story. You're a legend. I've just learned from her uncle, Tom Brown, that you were one of his students back at St. Mary's in 1972 yes. and sent some great pics. Yes. So Margin, DM us those pics. We want to see those pics and share those as well. I'm sure she looked beautiful then as she is now. And also again, Grace Lee, one of the filmmakers talking about that the reason that a film like this is possible is because of organizers like you who are paving the way for women of color and immigrants, you know, uh, for decades, which I absolutely agree. And, you know, it's been interesting because having all, if the one thing we can say about 2020, I like to call it the great pause, is that it's really making us pause and reflect and reset, right? So even though we supposedly have been at home, there's so much action, you know, or, or quarantine and people are like, oh, nothing's happening. There is so much happening. You just have to figure out how you're going to get involved and That's seeing good. the legislation that you're still pushing forward, you know, to represent people in spite of everything that's going on in 2020 is such an example of the chutzpah that you have, you know, cojones of that, of you're like, I still need to get this done. We're still going to make sure that we're on it and you're not letting that slow you down. So tell us a little bit more of what like has been like in the Senate with COVID and specifically being a woman of color. Like what has that experience been like for you? Well, as you can imagine, I mean, this was, I just went through my first year. So this was the start of my second year. Um, and, you know, you get used to a certain way to get to know your colleagues, get to know who the senators, who the assembly members are, how to work with the governor's office. Um, and, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to go through my second year and learn more. And then this hit. And it just completely threw off what appeared to be uh, you know, my second year in college, my, my second year in, in learning. Uh, and it, it really has made it very difficult. You don't have that, the warmth or, you know, the gestures that come at you when you're face to face with somebody. It says a lot. Um, most of the time it's um, phoning that you call on somebody. That's, that doesn't give you the connection that you need to feel for any idea that you have for legislation, especially tough legislation. So that's been, you know, that really threw me off. And it was, I was, um, you know, I have a Zoom meeting with my staff every morning. I don't get to see my staff, but they're working hard every day. You don't get to see the same tangible results that sometimes you, you, you know, that you would do before the COVID. But I also say that it has highlighted the, issues in our communities. So why is it that we can't get Medi-Cal expansion for our undocumented seniors? They're the most vulnerable from the very beginning. Why would it be okay to exclude them from health coverage when they're the most vulnerable during this pandemic? It's not good for them. It's not good for us either. It's not smart for us either to have this population excluded. It highlighted the lack of health care. It highlighted that undocumented workers mm -hmm. work every single day, that they don't have access to the safety net to which they contribute. So right. how's, how, how is it that men and women who contribute to our economy in uh, as gardeners, as um, services Farmers. of our yes. elders, yes. But, but they don't have a safety net. They don't have unemployment insurance. They don't have these things, but they put into the system. That's Every wrong. Day. Every yeah. day. So the pandemic has highlighted what was wrong, highlighted that we're not teaching our kids about each other. We're not yeah. teaching about the power, unfortunate power of racism. So it's highlighted all these issues and hopefully it gives us more tools, um, you know, to, uh, uh, to resolve them in a quicker way than what we were doing before. We are not going to adequately represent our communities if we don't take bolder, stronger, tougher actions and votes. I love that one. I love that you're talking about votes, which we're going to get to in a second. But even taking this bolder action, what are some of the things out there that the community, you would like them to invite them to do to make sure that they're claiming their power in 2020? 
Well, I'm really glad you asked that. Um, the census, the the census, we fought hard to make sure, for example, that our, our, our movement attorneys fought hard to make sure that the citizenship question was not added to the census. So we need to make sure that everyone in our community is counted. So much is at stake for 10 years um, and they need to get with it. It's become harder because we're used to the knock on the door, talk to people face to face. Now it's only by phone at most, you know, yeah. TV ads or radio. Um, we need to do much more as a community uh, about doing the census. Um, everything is determined, so much is determined by that. How much of our fair share of federal tax dollars that we pay is coming back to our community? What about representation? Are we going to lose members of Congress um, because the population, if, the, if everybody isn't counted, then it looks like the population has, has shrunk. So we'll have less members of Congress. Um, what, how much money goes to all the things that we need uh, uh, on the roads, public transportation, education. There's so much that comes from the federal government. So this census, we have to get more. In my district, unfortunately, we have parts of our communities that are traditionally hard to count. They haven't come through and we have to step it up to make sure that Boyle Heights and uh, Koreatown and all these communities get counted. So I ask of everyone, please work harder to get that done. Yeah, I love that you're bringing that up. I'm also pretty passionate about this myself. I've been speaking about it on my platforms and I'm doing a, another push for it as well. I'm very happy to announce that this is the first year that the census, you actually can complete it online. So if you don't want to use, you know, the letter that they sent you at home, or let's be frank, if you lost it, because life is happening, that's okay. You can do it online. All you have to do is visit 2020census.gov to get started. You could also even do it by phone. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight, especially for our Latino communities, what we do know is, it's, is that statistics show us that marginalized communities, uh, as well as communities of, of that are out in very rural areas, those are the ones that are usually the most undercounted and by fact then become underserved. And so to your point, there's so many things, including even during time of disaster, how we're affected and impacted by the census. So, you know, Puerto Rico is a perfect example. We still don't have a clear indication of really what the damage was or how many citizens are there because we know that the island hasn't doesn't have a full count, right? So being able to know how much money does your area actually need during a disaster is super important. And we also know that there was some threats out there made by the current administration where they wanted to add a citizenship question. So it's super important to discuss that out of the seven required questions, which will take you less than 10 minutes to fill out, none of them are about your citizenship at all. No, that is not part of it. And all the information that you provide is completely confidential. Not even your landlord gets it. I also have found among my community that that was a worry that they had because they didn't want to necessarily let their landlord know because everyone's trying to do what they can, you know, making a dollar out of 50 cents, how many people live with fear that their rent was going to get increased. So right. I just wanted to really dispel some of those myths out there as we're encouraging people to fill out, because as we know, it is also a big voting year for us. It is one of the most important, if not ever, elections that we're going to have. And what people also don't know is that census data is used to actually determine what languages pamphlets are made in your specific area. So if you do have a high community that speaks Vietnamese or Spanish or uh, Haitian Creole, we need to know that in order to have that literature there. So again, I just would love to invite and encourage everyone watching to not only fill it out yourself, but please tell a neighbor, please tell a friend because we're depending on it. Your community's depending on it. We're depending on you getting counted. So I just, I feel like that's super important. And I love that that is something that you're passionate about as well. And I'll, I'll say that uh, we are finding in our calls, right, that um, many of our um, uh, adults are saying, yeah, ya la llené, mi, mi hijo lo hizo. So they're counting on their young, you know, yes. sons and daughters to fill it out, which is wonderful. Yes. It's like, you don't feel comfortable, you know, in terms of how to ask. You get a neighbor's son or daughter. You get somebody yes. else to help you. But that's a very common answer amongst those who have already filled it out. And I love that. I love that's again, it's a, for us, our community really shows up together for familia. And this is one of those times where we need everybody to come through 
to the carne asada and get that census done, right? And for all communities to know, and if you do have questions, by all means, there's resources. You can definitely send me a DM. I could send you a bunch of links, but you can go to 2020census.gov. You can also go to Somos Mas. Dot org. They have a lot of information there that walks you through each of the different questions. And I just, I, again, I, I feel like it's so important and we just can't share it enough. Dolores, when she was on Altissimo Live, she too was sharing about it. And I'm like, hi, Dolores, I love you. Always on it with everybody. Um, and speaking of which, I know that you've often said that Cesar Chavez has inspired you so much. What has that relationship been with, uh, like for you with Dolores, who also is a classy chingona out there making things happen, even as she just celebrated her birthday? Well, everyone knows what an extraordinary woman she is. And um, she can dance like nobody. When she gets on that dance floor, she's nonstop. She's nonstop. And at such a young age, right? 90 years <laughs> old. Uh, I mean, she's remarkable. But, um, you know, there's a few ties with Dolores. Uh, one is that she recruited my late husband, Miguel, to come into the union when he was, you know, 18, 19 years old, recruited the family. And she recruited him to go full time at $5 a week, you know, for the, for the union. And she told him it was only for six months and asked him to go to Canada. Uh, never had been, he had been out of California. Um, and uh, he ended up years, you know, in the union doing the work. Um, but I say personally, I go to her for really, really hard things. Like I can't figure out how to do. And she comes calm, calm, steady, experience, uh, and yet inspiring. When I did a, a fast, I didn't do it anywhere near what um, others have done, but I did it for 12 days at USC. She'd come over and visit. She'd tell me, you know, how things, had, how they had done in the farm workers movement, how to watch, what to watch out for. She's a very extraordinary, extraordinary woman. And uh, we're so lucky in this nation to have her as one of our heroes. She really is a national treasure. And you described her so eloquently because every time I've had an interaction and, and I've been blessed to, to meet her and be mentored by her a few times, uh, it's that same thing. Regardless of anything around you, she's always even keel and she will always look for the bright side as she's looking for that solution. Like, okay, me capos, then this is what we do. Or let's try this. And she's taking notes. I'm like, I, can, I need to be you when I'm 90. Like, I just, I keep <laughs> continuing to learn. So yes, I just would say, may we all be Dolores Huertas. And it's so great because you yourself have that in you. And because of films like this, it really is allowing us to see. Otherwise, again, representation matters. How many more students could have known about Dolores beforehand that missed that opportunity because it wasn't taught in school, right? And what she did. And we haven't taught about the infamous walkout, which, you know, you know, was a huge thing for us, uh, specifically even in your district, but the way that even Chicanos and Latinos are, are treated in this country, right? So there's just all these ties of like why it's so important for us as we're getting into building the seats for our future to really connect to those in our past and to those who are being uh, leaders the way that you are. So I just continue to thank you in that end. And with that, I did want to get into us doing some unboxing here. So as I mentioned, I want to give a big shout out to the filmmakers of And She Could Be Next. I have no idea what's in here, but what I do know is that part one actually debuts tonight on uh, uh, debuts tonight. Yep, on PBS. So people can tune in, which is super great. Now, what I appreciate PBS being PBS is that you can actually not only visit PBS uh, to find uh, .org slash stations to find your local station, but then after six o'clock Pacific, nine p.m. Eastern, every night, you can actually just go ahead and watch it at PBS.org slash POV. And then they're back again tomorrow for part two. So I love that they gave it two nights. It was that good just to keep the party going. So let's see what we have in here. <laughs> I'm like very excited. Okay. So first things first. Okay. Yay. We have a little card, which is great. Also, I really love the colors. Uh, it says there's an organizer in all of us, which I think you could relate to, Senator. Uh, and it says, okay, you're receiving this power pack because we want to recognize you for your work and leadership. Oh, my gosh, I love it. 
We'll hope you'll join us on our growing movement to galvanize and support women of color to hashtag step into power. And that's exactly what we're doing today to do that. And it talks obviously about the film and where you can watch it on social, which we could do. Ooh, okay. So, oh my gosh, I love me a good t-shirt and there is one in here. This is so great. Oh, that's so beautiful. This is so great. Do you know anything about what they made here with the person? I love this. I love that. It, I don't know if you can tell, but it shows like all colors, all cultures. I see like the Muslim, I see African American, oh, Latino. Like that is oh. so beautiful. Like just the melding, right? Of culture. Oh, and then oh, I'm such a pin person. Oh my gosh. I'm so, <laughs> this is literally going on my jacket. So, and she could be next. Step into hashtag step into power, Mama for Justice. I love this. These are also available as well as like other resources uh, on the website, which you can go to and she could be next.org, which I love. But I seriously, I have uh, a jean jacket that I have just like have all these pins on there, everything from Time's Up to Si Se Puede to a mermaid that looks like Frida to just like all these things just to remind me of like my journeys as I travel and to keep me motivated to keep going and to keep rising. Well, you're gonna get more than more than the fill the jean jacket. I have boxes, so oh keep my them God. Yes, <laughs> please. And then these are so great. So check it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyone in my love books who are watching, if you leave me a message down below and let me know someone that is impacted, a female that has impacted you, or anything that you took away today. I will send you one of these. And that's exactly what they wanted us to do. They said, send 12 postcards to 12 women in your life mm -hmm. to recognize them for stepping into their power and leading the way. So I definitely would do, will do that, but I definitely would love to offer it to anyone watching. Let us know if someone in your community that we can send a postcard to, let me know someone that you want to recognize that's a female or something that was important from today's conversation as a tech uh, takeaway, which I think would be great. And then, oh, there were designed, oh, the shirt was designed by studio number one. I love it. She designed the She is United for this. Okay, yay. Let's put this. Look again. My goodness, this is great. <laughs> I just I love this shirt. Lucky you. Look at wow, that. I'm so That's excited. So That's great. Then, you get all the presents. I'm like, yay. And then yes, organizers need pins. I'm telling you, the pins are everything. Mm -hmm. Like they are just that and stickers. I'm just like super pumped, uh, which is so fantastic. And then yes. They uh, Tonight, we also know we're going to have a, a bunch of different places where you can watch it, which I'll get to in a second. But I did want people to know that they can go to andshecouldbenext.org, not only to purchase their own postcards or pins or shirts, uh, but also to be able to stream it. But on top of it, most importantly, there's resources there. Uh, I love giving homework. I call it homework for change to my community of daily action steps that they can take in order to be a resource, but also to be impactful in their community, whether that's signing a petition, whether that's calling in. Today, we were calling in to the city of Compton to stand up for Andres Cordado. Uh, in his case, we're demanding that the sheriff here in Los Angeles release the autopsy hold, as well as make it an independent investigation and have the attorney general take that over. Um, you know, so we're, we're out there every single day figuring out how can we really step up for our community, which I think is great. But to that end, Senator, I'd love to ask you, what homework for change would you give anybody watching at home that they can do? We know the census is one if they have it, but is there anything else that you're working on that you would want to amplify that they can really show support? Um, well, another piece of legislation is for the domestic workers. Um, so please uh, look up my SB 1257 because the domestic workers need to make sure that they have a right to health, healthy and safe working conditions. Um, and that's really important. Many of them, you know, don't know where and how they struggle through, you know, certain conditions that are just not he uh, healthy or safe. And so please help the domestic workers uh, get the rights and protections that all other workers have. It was because uh, when the laws were passed to cover all workers, it was African-American women who were doing, who were the domestic workers. And because of that racism and that mm -hmm. sexism, they were excluded from the laws. It's time to change, time to change. So I really appreciate your support around SB 1257. Thank you very much. That is so great. Uh, I'm gonna ask Freddie yet again, if he could send us a link or how we can do that so that we can share that with people, how we can show support 
who we need to call, what we need to do, because uh, we'll be on it. And I also want to correct myself. It's andshecouldbenext.com, andshecouldbenext.com, where you can actually find the resources available uh, as well. So, and if in addition to uh, PBS, you can stream it there, uh, and she could be next.com backslash watch, which is super important, which I love, where they can actually watch it all tonight. So again, this is so exciting. We have part one happening tonight, and then we have part two happening tomorrow. If anyone at home is still on the border or like has a little, a little one, a little love bug that they could watch this with, why would you say it's important for them to make the time in all the crazy things going on, and we know so many people are online right now, but to watch this, and what's the one takeaway you hope they have after watching? Well, one is that we get little snippets of information, you know, in this fast technology, um, there's very few uh, people like yourself who really get a little bit deeper into what's going on in our world and not just get caught up in, in, in the, uh, Fast, how fast it's moving. So one is you get to really understand what does it take to run for office? And uh, what does it really take to get past the barriers? What does it really take to be committed to our communities? Um, and that's a deeper understanding. So that's the first reason. Um, and the second reason is that we are products of our movement. So be an activist, even if you don't think right now you wanna run for office, uh, be an activist, get involved and use that. And then keep an open mind as to what leadership role you can play. Because all these women who do so much every day do have a leadership role in one way or another. So I'm very grateful to the film and everyone who had anything to do with putting it together. I love it. I think that's so great. I do want to shout out Ana Carion. Que dice que debería de hacer via, uh, via, Diablo, ni puedo hablar ahora, con nosotros en español para la comunidad. Ana, muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Y si te lo agradezco para saber. I just want to let Ana know that she's welcome. Um, I would love to ask you, Senator, if you have any words in Spanish that you would love to share with those that are watching. Sí, yo quiero invitar a nuestra comunidad que si no son activos en cualquier causa, que tienen que movilizarse porque nosotros vamos a ganar el respeto que merecemos solamente cuando nos organizamos, nos movilizamos y no porque nos va a caer del cielo. A, a, ahora es el momento que hay más actividad uh, y no hay excusa para nadie de no participar en hacer el cambio que merecemos. No me digan, oh, pues ya he votado, no importa, na, 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 eso no es aceptable. No es aceptable. So, sigan adelante los que ya son activos y pónganse las pilas los demás. Hay que participar. Perfecto. Y luego también para la gente que no sepa de el programa, ¿le pueden decir, por favor, un poquito de lo que pueden ver a hoy eh, en la noche en PBS y por qué es importante para verlo? Sí. Esta, esta uh, película es muy importante porque uh, enfoca sobre las mujeres y mujeres de distintas razas, de latinas, de asiáticas, de afroamericanas, como, como, como mujeres, cómo como hemos contribuido a este país, y hay que reconocer y ayudar a las mujeres que no se sientan menos, sino que se sientan iguales a cualquier otra persona, a cualquier hombre, y a, apoyarlas cuando se deciden tomar un paso como correr por el, um, un puesto uh, político. Si es que es muy importante ver la colaboración entre mujeres y especialmente mujeres de diferentes razas. Sí, perfecto. Y como estábamos diciendo más temprano, si quieren ver, pueden ir aquí. Les voy a poner eh, donde pueden hacer el enlace, Ana. Si quieren ir a pbs.org, uh, POV, ahí se puede empezar a ver gratis después de las seis o... Si quiere, también puede ir aquí a And She Will Be Next. Mira, lo va a poner. She Could Be Next, digo. And She Could Be Next.com. Y ahí van a tener no nomás uh, diferentes materiales para usted, pero ahí también mismo lo puede ver. Y va a ser dos noches. Hoy empieza part, eh, la primera parte y luego la segunda parte es mañana. Entonces, allí puede ir a visitar. Also, before we go, I wanted to shout out 
Uh, here is the legislation. A big shout out to Freddie for getting us the link. He put it in our comments if you're watching on Facebook for you to click. But I also wanted to put it here on the screen for you all to screenshot. I've made it into a bit.ly for you. So this is SB 1399, which you were speaking of, uh, that we could definitely help you support in order for us to make sure that we're supporting uh, the garment manufacturing industry right now and really show up to be a voice uh, a voice for them. So just wanted to make sure that we share that with everyone watching so we give them some good homework to do before they leave. And then I love it. I love that you're also being called out for being what you are, Maria Elena, is that you have to be an activist, right? And it's super important to know that we wanna activate the organizer and all of us. I think that also is fantastic. And Marjan, you answered my question. Ana, nomás para que sepan, va a haber uh, para todo, va a haber um, subtitles en español para el programa también. So super important that Spanish captions will be up for the broadcast tonight when they watch. So it's again, not only si se puede, pero si se pudo, you are proof of that. Senator, I appreciate you so much for showing that. I, I do hope that we're able to stay connected. There's quite a bit that I'm also on the ground working on, but also please know that I consider you familia, so if I ever can, you know, can be put to work, by all means, you can count on me and on my community to get out there and roll up our sleeves because together we are part of this change and this new America. Thank you. Can I dedicate this also to my two granddaughters, Sydney and Seneca? I want them to grow up to be powerful, strong women. Gracias. I love that. Sí, como que no. Vero Lopez has just joined us. She also wanted to say hello, uh, which I think is fantastic. Ana, de nada, nos está dando las gracias. De nada, Ana, gracias mucho por estar aquí. Se lo agradecemos. And of course, this is the best way to end it. No matter what we do today, make sure you take a little bit of time to share some love, to spread some love with others. Uh, and then make sure you also tune in. I do know, and I don't know, Senator, are you aware of, there's going to be a chat before the actual premiere happens as well with the filmmakers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not quite connected. I'm sure there's so much going on and I know yeah. you have to go and do some important yeah. voting. But for those who are still watching, by all means make sure to watch this space, make sure that you're following and she could be next uh, across all socials in order to stay tuned because they do have some exciting programming including with the filmmakers and the producer Ava DuVernay as well as some of the other women that are in the film happening before the premiere and then I will say this, Senator, I'm going to give a shout out to Freddie for getting you on the book of faces, as we call it, face in Spanish. But we're going to need you on Instagram. We're going to need you on Instagram. I appreciate that you're on his Twitter, but we're going to need you on Instagram. So I'm just going to invite we'll you do. and give you some homework, too, I if you could just it. come through for us on the IG. I will. Well, done. Done. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Senator. We'll see you Thank next you. time. We appreciate it. Marjan yeah. saying yes, you can join right here. Uh, on the And She Could Be Next Facebook page uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. For more, you definitely can follow me at all things XOXO Liza with Susie's, please. Uh, and I'll definitely be promoting. And I'm excited myself to watch. And again, we'll see you again soon. Hasta la próxima. Adios. Gracias. Ciao.